In this video, we will show you how to connect WhatsApp flows to an endpoint. You will use an endpoint with the appointment booking flows template, so you can populate the appointment locations and times dynamically based on availability, and to also save the user appointments in your database. The code for a fully working endpoint example for the appointment booking flows template is available on GitHub in Node.js. You can also fork and edit the code on Glitch in your browser. There's also another blank example that you can use for other use cases. To run the endpoint server, you need to set the environment variables for the private underscore key and passphrase. You can find the steps in the README to generate these. In the README, you will also find the steps to upload the public key to your phone number. The main file in the endpoint is flows.js, which controls which screen to display to the user and the data for the screen. The object screen underscore responses at the top of the file contains mock data for each screen. This data is generated from Flow's builder interface. The function getNextScreen decides which screen to display next. The INIT action indicates the initial request when the user opens Flow's, and the action data underscore exchange is sent for interactions with Flow's. Now, let's run the endpoint and connect it to Flow's. Once the endpoint is running and you have a public URL for it, you will go back to Flows Builder to connect it to the Flows. The banner on top will guide you to set up Flows endpoint. In the first step, you will enter the URL from your endpoint server. If you already have a phone number added to the WhatsApp business account and you uploaded your public key, then the following step is to select the Meta Developer app you want to link to Flows. The final step is to run the health check request to verify that your endpoint is available and that you implemented the encryption correctly. And now the endpoint setup is complete. To preview your flows with the endpoint, you will click on Settings, then turn Interactive Preview Mode on. In the following screen, you will select the phone number that you want to use. You can also customize the flows tokens. Under Request Data on First Screen, you will select Request Data to populate the data for the first screen from the endpoint. This will trigger the INIT request to initialize the flow and display the screen and data from the response. Alternatively, you can select a screen to navigate to directly without making an endpoint request. You can see examples for the endpoint requests by clicking on this menu, and under Endpoint, click Snippets. These are the responses that your server should return for each screen. And these are the requests that you will receive on your server. If you are having any issues setting up your endpoint, you will also find a link to the documentation page which has code examples in different languages for the endpoint. Now you can interact with the preview of flows to trigger the endpoint's requests. Now you can see the logs on the endpoint server for the incoming requests and the responses sent to flows.